It's been a year since uh, several new upgrades were implemented at the uh, Payload Operations Integration Center at the Marshall Space Flight Center in Huntsville, Alabama. So uh, let's join Lori Meggs, who is uh, there now. Lori, it's not only the people who are critical to conducting space station science, correct? Absolutely right. In order to accomplish that science on orbit, you have to have the people and the infrastructure here on the ground to get it all done. And joining me now is Angela Marsh, and she is the ground systems manager here at Marshall. And Angela, um, Marshall has had experience in well, more than 30 years in operating payloads in space, but the facilities play a key role in that. And as Amika mentioned, it's been a year since we've had these upgrades. Tell us how those have helped the team. Uh, Lori, the, the upgrades to the room have been tremendous benefit. The media wall that we installed has allowed the flight controllers to share information in a way that they weren't able to share information before. It has led to more efficient operations. The consoles that we stood up, each flight controller in the room has a specific job to do, so it's very important that we work very close with them to understand what their job is and to provide them with the systems and the tools, the hardware that you see on their consoles um, that fit them and allow them to do the job that they need to do. What does the particular infrastructure involve? The infrastructure behind this room are networks and systems that span all over the world. Um, not only are they responsible for communicating and working within this room, they also have counterparts all over the world, the international partners, payload developers, uh, university students. So the infrastructure and the networks and the systems that are in place allow them to work with their counterparts and communicate, command and control, receive their data, and do it in, in the most efficient way. Our interfaces span to White Sands, um, to Goddard Space Flight Center, to Mission Control in Houston, to Kennedy Space Center. We've been working human spaceflight efforts for, like you said, 30 years, and we are 24 by 7 in communication with, with the other NASA centers. That's awesome. We're seeing uh, Mike Seferdini as he toured here last year and got a first-hand look at everything that goes on. Let's switch gears a little bit and talk about well, it's hurricane season. We don't like to talk about it, but it is. It is. Uh, tell us about our capabilities here. We are the backup control center, right? We are the backup control center to mission control in Houston. The system went operational in 2008, and it was very timely. Um, Ike made landfall in 2008 and forced the evacuation. The flight, JSC flight control team came here to Marshall and they operated out of this facility for almost five days. They executed some critical ops, such as uh, docking of progress, and since then, we have added the capability for each of our international partners to continue to receive their data in, in an emergency situation. And it has been a capability that both Marshall and Johnson have benefited from the flight controllers have said they they felt like they were on their at their position at home in mission control in Houston. It's a pretty good compliment. <laughs> it is, it is. And this year we've worked to update and refresh all of the hardware and some of the systems that support the backup control center. So we're certified and trained Flight controllers come here, sit on console, make sure that the interfaces are operational and ready. We certified May 27th for 2014, and a lot of our upgrades that we did this year are taking us a lot of steps towards 2015. All right, we sound ready. Well, that sounds good. And, and some exciting news, speaking of being ready and preparing for next year, um, you have some exciting news about one of the international, I'm sorry, the commercial partners. Yes, absolutely. SpaceX has come to us and asked us to add them to the backup control center capability. So we, we will start working on that this summer, get them incorporated, and adding that point of presence here for SpaceX will also enable us to support them if there were an emergency or a catastrophic event at Hawthorne, an earthquake, um, they would still have access to their data and also 
to a voice system, a communication system. So um, I think that's going to be a really important and valuable addition to the backup control center capability. So any kind of evacuation emergencies, we are ready here. We are. All right. We hope we never have to use them, but uh, absolutely, we're ready if so. Thank you, Angela Marsh, for joining us today. And let's take a live look now inside the Payload Operations Integration Center, where they are busy at work today. They're working on um, ocular health, and also they're replacing hardware on the um, combustion integrated rack, the SIR rack, and they are gearing up for the Flex flame extinguishment experiment that's supposed to begin tomorrow once they get all this hardware in place. Uh, Stephanie Dudley is the Payload Operations Director today, leading the team here, and that'll do it for us.